Hey everybody, it's Mark again, and this is going to be the uh, final video for this uh, 1908 George Cool uh, Railroad Cuckoo Coil Clock. I will give you a heads up that there are still some issues with it, and we'll discuss those issues later, but uh, this video presentation is getting long, and I want to put it out. And I got the clock hanging on the wall. It is running. Um, but it, it, it's not the way I want it to be. So uh, later on, and when I get the time, I will uh, continue messing around with it and try to solve the issues. Uh, but I want you to kick back, relax, grab something to drink, grab something to eat. Grab a cigarette and let's learn things because that's what this is all about, you know, uh, is learning. And whether I use super glue or Tyvex or what I do with my clocks is totally up to me. I've said in videos prior that. There's only one person I got to please, and that's me. Now, if I was married, I would have to please my wife. But I'm not married anymore, so the only person that I have to please with my clocks is me. Unless I chose to sell a clock, and then I would have to please the buyer. And so if I was to sell an antique clock, it's wiser to put leather material versus Tyvex material. It's wiser, if you could afford it, to put bone hands, try to make it original as possible. But And I did that with the clock that I recently sold. Um, I didn't put leather... Uh, bellows in it, uh, but the clock wasn't a hundred years old. It was made in the 50s, and it will last that person a lifetime and probably her children's lifetime. Um, so, uh, if uh, you know. Uh, some people complain, well, you use super glue, it's harder for the next person to take it off. You will see in this video that I use super glue, I put the um, uh, quail bellow, I redid the quail bellow because the leather was extremely hard and tough, but I, I, I used Tyvex, covered the quail bellow. I didn't like it. I took it off. Didn't take me any time whatsoever to take it off. So, uh, and super glue adheres just like that. And that's why I like using it. And so, uh, It'll last for 50, 60, 70 years if properly taken care of. And 50, 60, 70 years from now, the technology that they might have out, there probably won't be a cow left or anything that has leather in it. So uh, Tyvex material will probably be the thing that you'll have to use. Anyway, I'll get off my soap bop. I hope y'all enjoy this video. When you have a question about a trademark, you go to Miracleisk. They're the best trademark there is. Here I typed in KCC. KCC and Diamond, George Cohen Company, Chicago Clocks, Sorry, cuckoo clocks, clocks, 
import Chicago, Illinois, USA. Possibly there was a trade relation with Jay Brigger and Son from Shonic, Germany. And here's their trademark GK and Shape Shield with stars. George Cool and Company registered on 30. This says March 1909. And then again, it says there was a trade relationship with Jay Berger and Son. And here's the other trademark. GK in shape, shield with stars, and Christmas tree. Again, this says it was registered on 30 March 1909, but the other paperwork from the um, NAWCC says it was January 1909 that it was registered. And here's another one. Uh, in coat of arms with branch GK. This one was registered in January 1909, according to this uh, webpage. And it, again, it says. Cuckoo Clocks, Clocks, Import of German Black Forest Clocks, Chicago, Illinois, USA. There is a strong resemblance of the figurative mark to Joseph Berger and Company from Schnonick, Germany, registered January 1909. Here I have the... Uh George Cool movement in my stand, and I want to figure out what size weights it takes. It didn't come with any weights, so I got my bucket attached, pouring the water, waiting for the pendulum leader wire to swing back and forth on its own. And that is about did it. Depending on the leader wire, might need adjusted a little bit. There it's where it needs to be. I need to go away this bucket. It takes about 700 grams of weight. I'm going to do the same thing for the quail side. Tripping the quail side. And it takes about the same amount of weight for the quail side. So we're going to go with 700 grams, 750 gram of weight is what it takes. Now I told you I would talk a little bit more about this movement. Of course this side here is a quail. And... Every 15 minutes, the quail trips. This lever here is what trips the quail. This lever to come out of the uh, count wheel. This piece right here is what pushes the quail 
out the door. So if your quail is not coming out the door, it is possible that this lever is not bent enough to push it out the door. Now I can't push it out the door because of the way this movement stand is designed. So I can't push it out the door. But it's the same way on the cuckoo side. This piece right here, this inside wire, is what pushes the cuckoo out the door. And the uh, spring is what brings the cuckoo or the quail back inside. And so if it's not coming back inside, it is possible that the spring needs to be tightened up. It is also possible that these two tabs that hold the bird post need to be adjusted. They could be too tight. There should be some play in this thing for it to uh, come back inside or go outside. This lever here gets tripped by the uh, count wheel on the quail to trip the cuckoo. So, as you can see, the inside lever here is what I'm pushing, and the cuckoo goes outside. The outside lever is what is attached to the lever that comes out of the count wheel. Now, the count wheel is what counts how many times the clock is going to cuckoo. And I still have to come up with a compression washer for the minute wheel with minute pinion. But I just wanted to show you that this movement takes around 700 grams of weight, give or take, to operate and how it operates. This lever right here is what activates the cuckoo. And it, uh, older clocks like this only cuckoo on the hour. Now this wheel here has two tabs, but they're not 180 degrees apart. So um, honestly, I don't know what why it has two tabs typically they would have one tab these wires here coming off is what lifts this lever for cuckooing i think one wire is to um trip the cuckoo and the other wire is to Uh, prevent the cuckoo from coming back up. Honestly, I don't know until I sit here and play with it. And that's what I'm going to do now. You will see that these notches in this cam are not wide enough for it to cuckoo on the half hour. So it only cuckoos on the hour. The reason why it has two pins on this thing is because this wheel is big enough. It plays, it cuckoos, uh, sorry, it quail one time on the quarter of an hour, two times on the half hour, three times on the three quarters of an hour, and then four times on the hour. And when I activate this thing, you'll be able to see what I'm talking about, hopefully. I'm sorry, I need to hire. A camera person, it's just me. I'm only one guy. So anyway, I got weight on both the uh, uh, cuckoo side and the quail side. So I'm going to trip 
the quail and watch this lever right here. That was one time. That's two times. Three times. And this pen is dropping the cuckoo so it cuckoos on the hour. And then again, one time, two times, three times, four times, and then the other pen activates the cuckoo. I don't know if you saw that or not, but the cuckoo bird is bouncing in and out of the door. And the reason why, I'm going to show it to you. This lever here rests on the count wheel. It, when it comes out, if it's not resting on the count wheel, the cuckoo bird will bounce in and out. So let me trip it and show it to you. You see it's not resting on the count wheel. And you can see the bird is bouncing in and out. So... I need to... Uh, bend this wire so it rests on the count wheel so the bird is not going to bounce in and out. So let me do that now. It took a little finesse, but now this wire here is resting on the count wheel and watch the bird. is stand outside the door. And he comes back inside the door. So I think that this movement is ready to go back into the case now. And it's the same way on the quail side. If this lever that comes out of the count wheel is not resting on the count wheel, the quail will bounce a little bit as it's doing its thing. Some people like that because it makes it more of an active bird, but most people don't like it. People who work on these things for a living, they'll point out to you, hey, your bird is bouncing, and it's not supposed to be bouncing. And some people like it bouncing because it looks like they're moving like a live bird. Now, this movement did not have, or if it had, I've lost it, the compression washer that puts pressure on the minute wheel with minute pinion. So I made one out of a piece of um, spring. So put that on, put this on, put these on, and then put a pin through here to see if it works. Now, this, now the hand that's on it is only temporarily, just to see if it's going to move. I need to tighten my stand down some more. And I had the hand before the 12 o'clock position. The hand is moving. As you can see, it's moving. I don't have a pendulum on it.
And so, uh, now it's time to put this movement in the clock. Because my compression washer that I put on it is working. And I meant to tell you, yeah, um, when I was repairing the bellows, one way to check to make sure there's no um, parts that are broken is to blow into the hole where the air comes out and then while you're blowing feel around with your fingers to see if there's any air coming out such as this and then when you do that when you go to close the bellow you're going to have to Push this in first. Again, I don't have a weight for this, so I'm going to use a nickel. The nickel seems to be about the right weight for it. So, um, that's what I'm going to use. I I didn't really say the truth. I've I've got weights. There, you know, I got four bags of fellow materials, and I'm sure I can find a weight in there. So that's what I'm going to use instead of a nickel. But if you don't have extra parts. A nickel works well. It's not the best sounding quail, but it does sound. And the bird goes in and out of the door. What I love about cuckoo clocks is it's never a dull moment. When you think that you know it all, um, it throws a curveball at you. Putting this high note lift bellow in its proper spot, tightening down the screws, doesn't work. That's because the case is putting pressure on the reed and for some reason it will not cuckoo. But if you loosen the screws and take the pressure off the reed, yeah. And when you're doing a video, everything never goes the way you want it to go. Now, I'm going to take this thing out of the case, and it'll start working. Like I said, that's what I like about working with cuckoo clocks. Is because it's constantly a learning opportunity. Out of the case, it starts working. In the case, it doesn't work. And... I think it has uh, 
This is original bellow for this clock. And I think it has something to do with... I can put this video where you all can see what I'm doing. Sorry. If I go like this... If I put my thumb in front of the hole, it doesn't cuckoo. So I think it has something to do with where the hole is in the case. And somebody might have replaced this reader right here. Never a dull moment. Using my Dremel, I bend some of this read out. So hopefully, when I put it in the case, nothing uh, hits it. And hopefully you could see this, but when I put this in the original nail hole, it doesn't work that well when I tighten it up because of this hole that I was telling you about. So I'm going to have to lift it, lift it up in the air more. So, because down here like this, it's just like putting your thumb in, uh, on this plate. It don't work that well. So, uh, this was the original area right in this area, but I'm going to lift it up to that area so it sounds better. And it sounded great until I put that nail in. Now it's going back to the same old... It don't make any noise. This clock has confused the crap out of me. And I finally figured it out. It is coming loose in this area right here. If I pull this apart, you should be able to see it. So I just need to uh, glue this up again because the side is coming off. You should be able to see it separating. And that's the only place it's separating. This entire front piece or... I guess we can call it the front piece, is separating. So, gluing it up should take care of it. This leather that was on it reminds me of that stuff that I bought at Hobby Lobby. It's way too thick. I don't know how it worked in the first place. But here's the low note bellow. Yes, it's Tyvex, but it's my clock. I'll do what I want. Your clock, you do what you want. My clock, I do what I want. But as far as the procedures to cover the bellows, 
doesn't matter whether you're using Tyvex or leather or a dollar bill, the procedures is exactly the same. I wouldn't recommend using a dollar bill. Um, and to me, it devalues our, our, our founder of our nation. Um, but again, y'all do what you want. Now that I glue the sides together, much better. Now that that problem is resolved, on to the low note bellow. Now the low note bellow wire, I've misplaced it. And this is a standard uh, length that you purchase from Time Savers. But watch what happens when the bellow is activated. You see that? And so uh, the wire is not long enough. And I don't want to bend the crap out of this lever that's coming off the movement. So I'm going to make a wire. And I have a video on how to make that wire. Yeah, I got the cuckoos working. But this quail does not sound right to me don't even sound like a quail I think there's something wrong with the bellow so I'm going to even though I just did this, I'm going to redo all my work. Because I don't like it. Now that sounds like a quail. And so there's something wrong with it's getting air maybe it's like the cuckoo and the case itself is broken and right here it might be broken there's a crack here so uh Got to figure it out. I think this sounds better myself. And because it has two gongs, I had to separate them because they were interchanged. They were connected together, so I had to take this apart, separate the gongs, and put them back together. I had to take this movement back out, and I'll explain why here in a second. Um, the clock would go into warning, and then it would stop. And this particular movement is set up differently than a typical uh, uh, movement, a uh, uh, cuckoo, antique cuckoo clock. Uh, the, being a cuckoo quail is set up differently, and but it still works basically the same. And... In the front of the clock, there's a a wire like this that's wrapped around. And if that wire is not bent right, when the clock goes into warning, whether it's at noon, quarter after a half hour, three quarters until, 
the clock will stop because it's putting too much pressure on it. And this is uh, my rough drawing here of what is typically on a antique cuckoo clock. You got this wire here that's got a C shape and that C shape hits the the one of two pens unless it's a um, uh, a cuckoo quail clock then that wire is coming off from this direction and it hits one of four pens if this C is too big to where when the clock goes into warning and you cannot move this wire here at all. Uh, the C is too big and it's putting too much pressure on the movement so it will stop your clock. You have to close the C some. Um, that way it's not putting too much pressure. And as I told you before, the end of this C is what you adjust to get your hands just perfectly. I, I can't put this in my movement stand as the gongs are too wide for my stand. But this is the lever right here that if it's closed too much, then at 15 minutes till the hour or whenever the clock goes into warning whether it's on the quarter hour hour half hour three quarters hour whenever the clock will stop because this is putting too much pressure on everything else so I had to open this in order for it to uh, to be able to move the hands. Closing it, when you go to turn the hands, they get tight in this area right here. You could force it, but you don't want to force it. So I had to open this up I'm still not too happy with this uh, quail bellow and I thought about taking this off because I was thinking maybe the air it wasn't getting enough air and putting this topper on and then I discovered there's not enough weight on this thing if I was to add this weight watch what happens and if you look at the other bellows Here's the uh, low note look bellow. It's got this big heavy piece of lead on it. And here's the high note bellow. Another heavy piece of lead on it. And so uh, it might not look the prettiest. I was going to try to cut this in half but I broke a couple blades so using my Dremel so I'm just going to glue this washer on top of here and that will be suffice to make the um, quail sound correctly 
I might have some other washers, but I don't think adding one or two washers would do it. I need a piece of lead like the other ones have. And this is heavy enough that it forces the air out of the bellow. And that's what I need. So instead of cutting this off, I'm going to glue it down. Because this thing is thick. And it would take a lot of work to cut this thing in half. Now, if I had a cutting torch, that would be the ideal thing. But I don't have a cutting torch, so I'm just going to glue the thing on. I do have a saw saw, but I don't have a vise, and I'm not going to hold this thing and cut it with a saw saw or a hand saw without a vise. I'll be cutting my fingers off. Not all cuckoo toppers come to the edge of the roof. And this is a original picture from a 1908 ad on my clock. So I just want you to see that before I show you the clock. Now I still have some work to do to this clock, but for the purpose of this video, because it's so long as it is, um, we're going to call this good. This is the 1908. George Cool Cuckoo Quail Clock. Now I'm going to tell you up front that the quail is not working properly. I still think that the um, the bellow itself is not wide enough. And um, for me taking the movement out, putting it in, taking it out, putting it in, the cuckoo is not doing the cuckoo. That don't sound like a quail to me. This is a cuckoo quail clock. And that's the way that one should sound. And so, uh, anyway, I hope you all like this video. Um, I'm glad it's hanging on the wall. I needed to put it together because I want Seth Linkfelter to design me another shirt uh, with this clock in it. Um... Anyway, I'm going to let it run. And by the way, I did make this pendulum. It is not carved, uh, you know, like the regular clock. I took my scroll saw, I took my Dremel, and I made this pendulum bob. But it works for this clock. Leave me some comments, please. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button because it's free to do so. And may God bless each and every one of you. I hope you all enjoyed this video. I hope that you learned things. Uh, I hope that it helps you out. Um, you know, my problems that I have in working with clocks, I pass the knowledge on to y'all. So you don't have those problems. If you only watch my videos, you know how many times a week I get asked a question that 
is covered in my YouTube videos. If people were just to watch my YouTube videos, my answer is going to be exactly the same as in my YouTube videos. But in my YouTube video, I can explain it better because you're able to see it. And when I try to uh, uh, type or video chat with people, the screen on my computer or on my phone versus you watching a, a, a YouTube video on your great big screen TV. And I've got a friend that does that all the time. Uh, watch my YouTube videos on his great big screen smart TV. And that way he could see it better and uh, helps him out. And so um, um, if you would just take the time to watch the YouTube videos Search for the YouTube video that says, um, why should I subscribe to somebody's channel? In that video, I explain exactly why. I show you the benefits of subscribing to somebody's YouTube channel. I subscribed to two people's channel today because I liked what I saw. And I would like to see more of what I saw. So anyway, uh, I don't know what we're going to do next, but I guarantee you it'll be exciting. So uh, leave me some comments and may God bless each and every one of you.